They were the marvellous sounds of the beautiful St. Patrick's Cathedral organ and Edwin Kwong at the console. We're going to talk to Edwin shortly, but right now, Thomas Hayward, standing here in the cathedral with me. Thomas, welcome. <laughs> How are you, Shane? Lovely it's to good see to see you. you too. Something very special, folks, coming up in just a week or two's time, and it's all around the fire at the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Tell us what's happening here, Tom. It is. Look, it's a very, very exciting event here at St. Patrick's Cathedral on Friday the 17th of May at 6.30pm. So, uh, a couple, of weeks, away, couple yeah. of weeks away. Basically, when we all heard the terrible news about that unspeakably dreadful fire at Notre Dame and saw those haunting images, I'll never forget the flash just coming, crashing through. It's horrible. Yeah. And so we thought, what can we do to help in some practical sense. Here in Melbourne. Here in Melbourne, right. absolutely, amongst the musical community, because Notre Dame, of course, isn't just famous for the fabulous organ and all of that, but it's also really the birthplace of Western music. Wow. It's, it is such an important space and such a beautiful space. And we thought, what can we do? So I rang Paul. Paul was actually driving down from Bendigo at the time, and I said... Paul Taylor, the master organist here at the St. Patrick's Cathedral. Absolutely. Paul Taylor, the wonderful director of music here at St. Patrick's. And, and I rang Paul and said, how about we organise a fundraising concert at St. Patrick's involving as many organists as we can get in Melbourne to come and perform all donate their performance fees we get a fabulous crowd and we raise a lot of money and send it over to our wonderful friends at Notre Dame and Paul said that's fantastic I'll check with the Dean and it all happened and things locked in and so we were able to come up with the date of Friday the 17th of May at 6 30 at 6 30 p.m. well look folks uh, we're going to talk shortly to Edwin Kwong who'll be one of the people performing uh, on the night. And we're also going to ask Paul Taylor to tell us a little bit about his association, which is actually quite directly with Notre Dame. Oh, absolutely. In parts of his life. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Thomas, before we talk to Edwin, just give people a little taste of what they're going to hear. This sounds like it's a, an organ concert that if you've never been to one, yes. this is the one to come to. Absolutely, this will be the one to come okay. to. We have nine Melbourne organists performing. Wow. I'm going yep. to open the program with the piece actually performed at the reopening of the organ in Notre Dame in 1868. Wow. It's a fabulous piece of music by Alexandra Gilmore. Then we have Joshua Nah, a young Melbourne organist. He's senior organ scholar at Halebury. He'll yes. be performing a fabulous piece by Louis Vienne, who was organist of Notre Dame from 1900 to 37. Vienne actually died at the Notre Dame console of wow. all things. Yeah, yeah. And then we have Christopher Cook, a wonderful Melbourne organist. He's going to be performing one of the movements from Vienne's fabulous organ symphonies. And then Edwin Kwong, whom we'll be meeting soon, he's going to perform the famous Toccata ah, yes. from Beatles Fifth Symphony. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have, after interval, Tom Baldwin, another wonderful young Melbourne organist, is performing performing one of Dupre's, Marcel Dupre. He was yes. organist to Cecil Peace for many years, but he wrote these fabulous preludes and fugues. And there's a famous one in G minor. Tom's going to perform that. Okay. And then we have Thomas Grubb, one of the wonderful organists here at St. Patrick's. He's going to perform some Messian, a famous uh, the apparition of the Eternal Church, which will be a wonderful piece. And of course, we stand here mm. in this unbelievable cathedral. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, this is a cathedral of absolute renown worldwide. Oh, totally. One of the finest Gothic revival cathedrals on the planet. And so totally. I assume there's beautiful organ music. Yes. You're an expert, I'm not. In a cathedral like this is probably pretty special. It really does. It yeah. stirs the soul, it revitalises you, the beautiful sound of this wonderful organ filling this glorious space. Absolutely. Now, I did stop you in your tracks. There were three more oh, yes. performers. Yes, yes, yes. Where do we get to? Uh, Thomas, Thomas Scrub. Yeah, yeah, Thomas Scrub is going to play some Messier. Then Tony Way, the wonderful yes. director of music at St. Francis Lonsdale Street. He's going to play some early French organ music by de Grigny. Then we have Mark Slavic, who's the organ scholar at St. Paul's Cathedral. Should involve the Anglicans. Excellent. <laughs> he's out at St. Paul's Cathedral, yeah. the other three spired cathedral. And uh, he's going to perform some long lay. And then finishing the concert with Dr. Paul Taylor, the wonderful director of music here, playing one of Vienne's most famous pieces as well, the finale from his first organ symphony, which is a stir wonderful piece. The sound of a grand organ thundering through a space like this is so exciting, it really is. So I'm about to step into the magnificent organ area and I'm going to ask Edwin to play a little bit of his music that we're going to hear on that night, but let's just wrap it up. You can go to the Try Booking or you can come here on our Melbourne Catholic website, go to the link, $25. $25. Tell your friends, if you're like me and organ music's a little bit not really part of your life, I'm told, one concert, this is it. Come Three along, there. absolutely. And if you are an organ aficionado, it does yes. sound like you have ticked all the boxes. Absolutely, there's something for everyone, totally. Friday, May 17, 6.30pm, here in this magnificent St. Patrick's Cathedral. I'm about to wander over now into the organ area and I'm going to meet Edwin Kwong. Thomas, good luck. Thanks a lot, Shane. And thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Well, I've actually come into the beautiful organ console 
here at St Patrick's Cathedral, Edwin Kwong, one of Melbourne's finest young organists. Thanks for joining us. No worries. This concert uh, on May 17 sounds very, very exciting. It is. We've got some of the greatest hits, um, per se, of the organ literature, uh, performed by some of the best Melbourne organists. Um, so I think it'll be a wonderful event. Now, am I right in saying you've actually played at the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris? I have. I was very fortunate last July um, to get a chance of, to go in after hours. Um, it's around midnight and I got to play the organ and to play pieces by Vienne um, and other composers who's worked at Notre Dame as the organist. Um, there, and that was a dream come true. I can imagine. Yeah. Now you've been playing and loving the organ for about a decade? Yeah, roughly about, yeah. And, and what makes the organ special? Um, just that you can create such a diverse sort of sonic landscape with uh, the organ and every organ is different as well. Um, every organ in every city, in every church, in every concert hall uh, in, and then you've got all the different schools of um, organ building as well. So the Americans do it differently to the Germans, to the French, uh, it's all very different. So the Notre Dame organ and the Notre Dame console are we talking a bigger space than here in St Patrick's? Yeah much bigger. Um, so uh, I guess for a start, um, the organ itself uh, is elevated a lot higher um, yes. at the back of the church. Yes. Um, and the console is five manual, so it's five keyboards compared to four here. Yes. Um, and it's a bit, a bit bigger as well. It's got about, I think, eight and a half thousand pipes. Um, and whereas this one, I think, is probably closer to about half of that. I see. And you've had the chance to really travel the world in terms of your organ playing. You're obviously very very good at it but there's something a bit special also about being able to get and play the organ in different places across the world yeah absolutely absolutely so um i've been able to play uh, in new zealand in the uk in france in sweden as uh, of course in australia as well um and it's i think it's one of the great joys of playing the organ that um you get, get invited or you get to go to different places and people are usually very friendly and they'll be very happy to let you play the organ um perform in a recital and it's a great way to see as well because you get to see some amazing <laughs> buildings around the world. Well, Thomas, who we spoke to earlier, of course, was the person who got you rolling yeah. uh, in terms of your organ playing, and he tells me you are just magnificent. We've heard little bits of your organ mm -hmm. playing through this interview, and thank you so much for that. No worries. So, Friday, May 17, 6.30, look at the camera and tell people why this is the one they should not miss. Well, as I said before, it has some of the greatest hits of the organ literature, um, performed by some of the best organists in Melbourne and indeed in Australia. And of course, this goes a very worthy course of um, helping the restoration of uh, the Notre Dame Cathedral, a uh, significant cultural asset um, and sort of historical asset to people of the world, not just of France. So I think it'll be a great event to come. Edwin, thank you. $25, folks. That's all they're charging. Friday, May 17 at 6.30. I'm going to now wander out of the console. Around the back, we're going to be able to actually give you a look at exactly that magnificent organ. And I'm going to talk to Director of Music here at St Patrick's Cathedral in Paul Taylor. But in the meantime, let's just hear a little bit more of this beautiful music. Well, I've made my way, folks, around now to the front of the console and hopefully behind Dr. Paul Taylor and myself, you can see this magnificent organ. Dr. Paul Taylor, welcome. G'day, Shane. An absolutely fantastic idea that you and Tom have put together this concert. We've talked about the people who are performing. We've talked about Notre Dame. I want to come back to that because I know you've got a special association. But who, in a sense, is putting on this magnificent concert on May 17? Shane, it's a collaborative venture between the Australian New Zealand College of Organists yeah. that um, Tom is president of, and also the Catholic Archdiocese of Melbourne. So it's a collaborative venture between both bodies. Okay, and obviously a lot of work going in. There's a tribe booking link, make it very, very easy to get your tickets. You must be so proud, as director of music here, to have a, an organ of this calibre in a cathedral of this stature, and then at the same time, be raising money for probably what many would say is the iconic cathedral of the world. Absolutely. The um, Cathedral of Notre Dame has a special place in obviously the, the hearts of the French people, but for organists around the world, the Notre Dame Cathedral is like a mother church because it's home to a wonderful pipe organ and a liturgical tradition there. 
and I think a lot of people felt the, the fire there um, was just a huge tragedy on many different levels. And um, we just felt that it's a little symbolic gesture that uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral community can do towards funding the, um, the rebuild of yes. Notre Dame Cathedral. And when Tom got on the phone, the very morning that the fire occurred, I said, oh, we've just got to do this. Yes. This is a fabulous initiative of his. And um, we're just delighted to be collaborating with him and the um, ANSCO and the, the Archdiocese. So can you describe in this little interview how you personally felt? Is it hard to get the words out? I mean, because oh. someone like you, it probably hits harder than someone like me. Well, it's, um, it was, my mind went back to 9-11 and watching the, the tragedy unfold in New York. And when you saw the fire on top of the, the roof of Notre Dame and the commentary of the, um, the journalists, one couldn't help but thinking, how far is this going to go? Mm. And then when they s decided that the fire was out, it was sort of a huge sense of relief. But then there was the questions of how much damage had been done, both to the building and then internally to the, the instruments that um, many of us would have been interested in because of the, the whole music connection. Um, so there's a sense of relief that it wasn't worse than it is, but it's bad enough. Mm. And um, I am just hopeful that we can um, make a small effort towards the, the rebuilding. What's your personal connection with Notre Dame? Well, like a lot of people, I've had the great privilege of visiting there over the years. And um, I guess in more recent times, though, here at St. Patrick's Cathedral, we've been the host of a number of recitals by French organists. Ah, OK. And um, just in the year 2017, we hosted Johan Vexo, the choir organist of Notre Dame, wow. and Damien Riviere, a tenor from the cathedral music staff. And we had them here again just in February this year. And um, they gave a wonderful Marian concert here. And so when we heard of the fire, we obviously thought of them, and because their livelihood's going to be impacted. Of course. Along with all the other staff associated with the cathedral there. So we thought, well, this is a sort of a, a symbolic gesture of support towards the appeal effort and to make them feel as if the people around the world are supporting them and um, very sorry of, what, of what's happened. So I'm not an organ junkie, like many people watching this may be, but you've got me excited about this concert. I must say, it does sound fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations to you and Tom and all those people giving up their time to uh, Father Werner, who's the yes. Dean here at the Cathedral yes. for making it all happen. So it's Friday, May 17, folks, $25 admission. It's a starting time of 6.30. There's a link on Try Booking and also on our very popular Melbourne Catholic website, where you've probably found this very interview. So I just urge you, and I'm sure you do, Paul, Absolutely. to come along on that night. Absolutely. We're trying to draw on the, the, the wide Melbourne community, but also members of the French community who may be in a position to come along to St. Patrick's on the night and um, as a great sense of solidarity between the, the general public and the, um, the French people. So we're hoping that we'll fill the cathedral. The cathedral holds 1,200 people. Well, there's a challenge. Yes, we're just hoping that um, we can fill the cathedral and um, send all the money over to Notre Dame. Tell your friends, folks, 1,200 people, we want it packed. Friday, May 17. Thanks for joining us and Paul, good luck. Good on you. Thanks Thank very you. much, Shane. Very grateful.